Hello, welcome to a Good Friday special. It's been a miserable week for the national teams. England failed to record a victory against Brazil or Belgium. Wales crashed out on penalties and Scotland got hammered by the Irish. But what we're going to do today is four steps to get your lawn looking great, but we're going to guarantee the results we want. So without further ado, let's crack on. All right, so if we just have a look at the lawn, what it was like this time last year, when we first turned up to dig the drainage holes, we can see we're in a far better position. All this area had died, but this year all we've got is a little bit of damage there from the tree drips. So I'm quite pleased on where we are right now. It means we don't have to do too much to it. The only problem we have got, which I didn't seem to see last year, was that we've got all these sycamore buds growing in the lawn. So what we're gonna have to do is we have to sort these out. It's easily done. These only have like one chance at growing. So once you take these two top leaves off, they can't grow anymore. So what they'll do is we'll get it cut with the rotary, take all the tops off, scalp it, and we're going to scarify it, and that will hopefully get any uh, roots out and things. But if there's any still left in there, they're just going to die off over time because we're going to keep mowing it, and they just won't be able to grow, so they'll just die off. So don't worry if your lawn is covered in sycamore uh, seeds. Okay, so the first step we are going to take to get our lawn off to a great start is we're going to take off all the existing growth now why are we doing this if you imagine you're decorating your house we never just paper over or if we did just paper over the paper that's already up there we'd get an half decent job but it wouldn't be as good as taking the old wallpaper off filling up any holes and starting again from scratch sanding etc and that's the same what we're doing here we're just scalping it all back we're getting rid of all that old stuff so we can start again with new but with this the old line is going to come back through and matching with what we're putting down. So what I'm going to do is straight on with one, because it's only a small lawn, I don't have to worry about the bag filling up dead quick. So number one, straight off, and we'll see how it looks. So I'll just drop it down, start her up, and away we go. Okay, so that's the sycamore problem done. So what we're gonna do now is, before I swap the cartridge over for the scarifying cartridge on the Sterling, I'm just gonna whip over this with the cylinder in a different direction, just to get it shorter, because number one on the hater isn't short enough uh, for what we want here. So we're gonna scalp it even more, and then this will expose uh, more burr areas which we can get better access to for our seed. So what we'll be doing is, we're going to be putting a vertical cutting cartridge in, which is going to give us some lines in there. But I have got a new tool to show you, just for an areas where you just want to do a bit of overseeding. Uh, and on a lot, a lot like this, it's that uh, small, this tool could be used all over if you wanted. So I'll show you that later. Uh, but I'm excited because I've used it this morning already somewhere else, and it is a really good tool just for, uh, especially sw for squashed worm casts. So I'm looking forward to showing you that. But for now, we're going to scalp this even more. So we'll just have a close look now I've scalped it. We can see what we're dealing with. Got so many of these sycamore things. Well, a lot of them have kind of just died off and aren't gonna do anything, but some of them have. Some of them are just growing on the soil actually. They're not actually rooted. So we've got some moss growing off the trees, which has fallen off the light can there. So we need to get this uh, scarified because we've got a little bit of moss coming through as well. So that'll get all that up. So yeah, it'll look a bit wisp wear after we've done, but it's all for the greater good. And I'll just show you what we've taken off. That's scalped it. So we're done with the scalper now, so let's crack on with step two. All right, so we're on to step two now of getting your lawn ready for the summer. What we're gonna do now is we've got the Alex scarifying attachment in there. Now, as you know, there's two types of scarifying. There's them with which have got like the metal prongs on, or there's a bladed one. What we're doing today is we're gonna use the, uh, the prong one first, 
because this is going to help us pick up all those uh, seedlings that we've just seen and then we'll get on with the verticutting reel in there as well it's all going to be done with the sterling today no ye old faithful she's having easter off and then that'll create some little grooves for our seeds to fall in alongside the tool that i told you about as well so we'll just drop this down we don't want to do too much work we just want to scratch the surface we're not entering that soil that's not what we want to do with this device that's not going to happen it's just going to damage it because the resistance and the strength of that metal on them springs will just end up bending it back so what we're doing with this one is we're just gliding across the top of the surface picking up any surface debris all right let's have a look in there we've brought up a bit of sand as well which we put down in the middle of last year just to level it up a little bit but most importantly look at what we brought up all the moss all the saplings that were growing there or are going to turn into saplings so yeah great job let's just have a look over here now yeah that's a lot cleaner so if we have a look up close now you can see now we've got rid of all that there's still a little bit left but nothing to worry about I don't want to go over it again because it's quite it is quite a bit damp so i don't want to do too much damage so i think we've done enough so what we'll do is now is i'm not even actually sure i'm going to go at it now with the vertical cutting attachment i've done such a good job i'm going to show you this new tool and we'll just go up and down with that and then uh, you're in for a bit of a surprise because it is a great tool okay now we've scalped it that was part one we've done part two which was scarify now we're on part three which is overseeding but before we can put our seed down we just need to break up this surface a little bit and for this i've got this new tool so let's show you how to do it okay so you need a pretty damp surface but all we're doing is we're just going like this so you can do it like this and just create some little grooves and then you could go that way if you wanted obviously the softer your soil is the easier it's going to go in but look at that the seed's going to fall in there and i'm going to cover it over we've got ourselves like a, it's almost like a dibber with multiple dibs on so yeah look at that so what you could do is you could just go like that if you wanted all over or you can just literally walk in a line and i'll show you up close now what that does okay so you can see now we've got those grooves for the seed to fall in that's just one pass and this is where i did multiple passes different directions so on a job like this this lawn's so small, we can easily do this in about 10 minutes. So I'll get on with that and then we can get on with our seed. Okay, so I did that in just under five minutes. My arms are killing me. So you need a bit of stamina. It's not on the legs, but it's on the upper body where you're pushing it in. So if the ground was quite hard, I think it'd be a hard task, but because it's really soft, we're all right. But you can see what it's done. If we just zoom in for you. You've got some nice little grooves there. And over here where it was quite bad because the, gra uh, the grass has died away, I've just done multiple directions just to rough it up a little bit all over but generally that'll do just one pass but if you have any areas where it's just a bit more excessive where just do it a bit more so yeah so what we're going to do now is the next step of part three is get the seed on okay so ready for overseeding the next step on our journey to a great lawn if you remember last year when we did this from scratch we used our extreme seed so we're just going to go on with that again it's a dwarf rye, so it's very versatile. You can leave it as long as a perennial ryegrass, or you can cut it short down to 8 mil, like they do at Wimbledon if you like. So it's a very versatile seed and it's easy to get going. And now we've created these little grooves for it to sit in, it's going to get away even quicker. And then once we've done this, we can get on with our top dressing. And that's part four of getting our lawn ready for the summer. Oh, 
All right, so I've just cleaned the path up. Now, if you remember in my last video, I showed you a little tip about the H2 Gold wetting agent. Now it's a new one. It actually helps with the softening of the seed. So what I'm gonna to do today is because we're gonna to be top dressing and covering, in the last video, I didn't fleece. So we kind of separated the tank into two lots. So we went over uh, after the seed and then after the top dressing, well today I'm gonna to have to do that by three. So I'm gonna to have to put some on now when we've top dressed and then on top of the sheet. So I'll show you how I do that next. All right, so we're just gonna go on with our H2 Go. Now this bottle does 125 square meters. We know our back lawn is roughly 50. So we're just gonna put 400 mils in here. Now, as you can see, most wetting agents are quite gloopy, like the ones I used to have, but this one's much better. Its specific gravity is, is almost zero. So the higher the specific gravity in terms of number, then the gloopier it's gonna be. But this is just like water. So there's no sticky residue once you've finished on the inside. So I think it's better. And like I said, this one softens the seed cut. So I'm gonna put 400 in. Just gonna put that to one side for now. I'm gonna put the amount of water I need in the tank as well. And then when I'm spraying, I'll just divide, I'll put enough in. So I'm gonna put three times the amount of water that I need in. So in this case, I'll need six litres. There are thereabouts, well, 560, 5.6 litres. And then that'll give us 400 to top up to six in here. So that's about right. So we're good to spray. All right, on with the next step of getting our lawn looking decent. What we've got here is instead of using field compost number four today, I'm using number five. Now, there's a distinct reason why. Just over the winter, we've had a bit of sinkage again. Just with a new lawn, you do get a bit of sinkage, and especially because we've got a hard patio all the way around other than here it shows up it's not like we're rolling off into a border or something and we wouldn't notice when there's a constant edge like a patio you know so we're going to build that back up now if you use field compost number four now this just rots down and just fades away and isn't for leveling but uh, field compost number five has field compost number four mixed in with horticultural sand to give it some bulk and sand isn't going to degrade so that enables us to use it as a leveler so it's first for me actually using it as this i've used it to just top up a few areas just where there's been a bit of a uh, worm cast damage i've dug it out or whatever and filled it in but as far as spreading it goes this is a first so i have no idea how far it goes but it's not kiln dried so it's not it's um not going to be as uh friable in terms of moving it around and filling in micro undulations but it's going to enable us just like i said just to fill up the areas where it's sunk a little bit and cover our seed over nice and body, including those holes we've already made. I really see this um, lawn getting away really quickly. So we'll just drag it along, use the edge of the rake along the wood and that gives you your edge. And if you want to, if you're just struggling to move it, you can just use the rake to pull it, which is probably a good way first actually. Because it's a bit heavier than the field compass number four, it doesn't move as easy but it's really nice stuff to work with it's like a really nice topsoil but not soil so it looks like we're going to get quite a lot out of it actually so yeah so bolton it's 10 to 3 now bolton we're about to kick off at stevenage northampton did us a great favor last weekend beating derby now that will be useless if we don't go and beat Stevenage away. We're on an awful run at the moment, although we're not on a great run. But the destiny is in our hands today because we'll be one point behind Derby and they've got to go to Portsmouth as well away. So we could um, gain some advantage there because we've got three home games on the run. So wish us luck. Hopefully we can do it. But I think it's playoffs for us this season. What do you think? If you're a Portsmouth fan watching, do you think you're going to do it? Or do you think you're going to slip up? Have you got enough margin now? Because I think you're nine points clear. So we'll see. So I'm getting pretty nervous. I always think we're going to lose away. I do go to away against quite a lot. But we pick and choose the ones we go to to keep our running, um, our winning victory in terms of a run that we've got over going back 10 years in order. If we go to games where we know we're going to lose, that's it. So we pick and choose. So yeah, so I'll crack on with this. 
and we'll see you in a sec. Now don't worry about moving your seed along. You might do a little bit, but you're not going to move it that far. It's going to have any negative effects. But what it is going to do, it's, it's really going to push them into them holes as well that we've created. So yeah, so I'll crack on and we'll see you in a bit. And luckily, just as I've finished top dressing, literally, it's just out chucking it down. So I'll let this uh, blow over and then we'll get the sheet on. Okay, so we had a bit of a storm there. Off camera, I decided whilst it was raining, just to spray the wetting agent on so it washed it through. So that's done. So what we'll do now is I've got the sheet. It's still here from last time. So I'll roll that out now and get it fleeced. All right, so that's the fleecing done. Just anchored them down with these staples I picked up from Screwfix or Tool Station. I can't remember, but they both sell them. Now, just before you fleece your lawn, just think about why are you doing it here? For a whole host of reasons. We've got birds, we've got cold, we've got leaves dropping, we've got all kinds of things. So here it's going to pay dividends. But like on the lawn just over there, which we did last week, we didn't fleece that because there was no need to, so we can save money there. So don't always fleece, just think about why and ask yourself why. And if you've got these problems like I've got, then fleece. But if you think you can get away with it, then don't. Yep, so what I'm gonna do now is just finish off with the wetting agent and then that is this job done. Okay, that's this video done and dusted. It's been a good, good Friday. We've had some sun, we've had some rain, and we've had some winds, and we've had some hail, so we've had everything the weather can throw at us. Now, remember in my last video, I said if we got to 40,000 subscribers by the end of March, I would do something discount-wise on my website. Well, we did, we got there pretty quickly, so I'm a man of my word. So for the remainder of the Easter holidays till midnight on Monday, I'm going to give 10% off my website with the code DHLE10, which leads me on to the Field Compost discount code. That is exact same, and that works on Field Compost number four and five, so knock yourself out on that as well. Take advantage of it. That one's available all the time, but the Easter one for me is just over Easter. So what we're going to do here now is we don't need to put anything else on, no feed, nothing else. We'll just put the H2 go on for today. We don't need to feed it because we don't want that grass coming through yet because we've got quite a burr area over there. We don't want the existing lawn poking through before that is up and away. So what we'll do is we'll check back in in a couple of weeks. We've got plenty of water knocking about, so we don't need to worry about that. So take care and we'll see you next time when we're doing something else lawn related here on Daniel Hibbert Lawn Expert. Bye for now. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.